It is October 26, 2023. We're here at the Pile Center with Gladdy Norby Zelstra. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here to share your Tempe life stories with us. Okay. And we're going to start at kind of your beginning, which is when and where were you born? Okay, I was born in High Prairie, Alberta, Canada in 1946, and uh, the youngest of six kids, the living six kids that I know of. Um, my mother died when I was three, and uh, it's okay. She, okay. My father brought me to the States when I was six, and I was adopted by a cousin who had two boys, so I grew up in a family with two boys. Um, and what state was that? In the state of Washington. Oh, okay. I grew up in Spokane. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think when I was eight, Mabel, my adopted mother, decided to look up my sister. And uh, they found my sister in uh, a little town in Alberta. I think it was in Alberta. I can't think of the name of it right now. But she had my um, six-month-old niece at that time. And it was kind of funny because they were driving down the street and it was a mobile home park and we saw these two ladies pushing uh, carriages and mom pulled up and said to one, she says, uh, can you tell me where I can find Kirkus? And this lady said, started talking, you know, and um, well, we don't have anybody by that name around here and blah, 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 blah. And the other lady is staring at me and I'm staring at her. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's that was my sister. Wow. And we recognized each other. But the fact that you got to reconnect right. for some time, and you mentioned niece, so you obviously reconnected with... Yeah, with like I said, family. there's 21 of them that I know of, and I don't know how many great nieces and nephews. There's a whole slug of them. Wow. And uh, we, you know, I've lost my oldest sister and my two brothers, and my two adopted brothers. But uh, in fact, one of my jobs in Tempe, uh, I was an uh, engineer with a telephone company, and all of my training was through the telephone company. I never had formal training. It was all on-the-job training. And um, I handled ASU as part of my area. And I could tell you the tunnels of ASU like the back of my hand, because that's where I was. It's when I do something for ASU, it was down there. And then in uh, 1984, um, ASU decided to build their own mini central office and I had just gotten done writing a job totally re-cabling ASU and then they came out and surprised me with this and I'm going oh great well there was bids on who they wanted to cable the place well we didn't uh, at the time I think it was US West I don't know if they went through so many right. <laughs> changes. It could have right. been Mount Bell. U.S. West and Quest and Mount mm -hmm. Bell. U.S. Like West, you said. West, CenturyLink, mm -hmm. whatever the heck mm -hmm. they are now. I don't even know. <laughs> um, but there was bids put out, and there were several people from different areas. And this one guy, I don't know how I started talking to him, and it turned out was a friend of my brother's. And he was in Spokane. So I thought it was kind of funny, but we didn't get the bid on that. but. Oh, probably halfway through or three quarters through the project, the company that got the bid went bankrupt. And then it came back to you? Yep. They came back and asked us if we'd do it. My boss says, no, you wouldn't take us to begin with. We're not doing it now. <laughs> so, but it was really quite interesting working with ASU because uh, Daryl Eschbach was in charge of communications and Rose Snow helped him. And um, I did a lot of stuff with them in it. You know, it goes back, like I said, one in 84 is when they, we call it a system 84 because that's the year they put it in. But I had handled Tempe a long time before that. So when you talk about um, tunnels under ASU and this kind of communications, for those of us that might not understand what that means, is that the um, phone systems the for, for all of like Arizona State Universities? Their phone system is down there, their sewers, their hot water. I mean, I climbed over these huge um, ducks that were wrapped, which I didn't realize at the time they were wrapped in asbestos. Mm. And I used to climb over them all the time, not thinking any of it. 
And at that time, you could get into the tunnels very easily. They weren't locked like they are now. I mean, they started having problems, and they then started locking everything up. But was it through like manholes or stairs or? There are uh, there's stairs. There are manholes. There's uh, entrances through some of the buildings. Like Old Main is where they put their System 84. And uh, then everything was brought back to that location. But yeah, it was very interesting, like I said, of all the things that I had to do with ASU. And uh, I handled ASU for quite a while. And there's a lot of things on campus I could tell you about that you know nobody even knew they were there. Fun, tell us something. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when my memory was a little bit. <laughs> well, if it comes back to you. Um, but it is very uh, much a credit to you that you didn't, like you said, have to have any formal training. Right, this no. is something that uh, you All of my into. training was on the job. I transferred uh, from Air, uh, Illinois in 1976 and went back to what we call back to the board. I was a long distance operator. And I spent six months because that was the time and location I had to spend. And then I put in for what we called an upgrade. And I looked around and I thought, well, everybody's putting in for this uh, one position. And if everybody's putting in for that, that is, my chances aren't good. I'm gonna put in for what they call an engineering records clerk. Well, I lucked out when I went into that because I could have ended up in posting onto our jobs, um, what, we, uh, what we called spiders. They were all of our cables and everything, the counts and, and stuff of the cables. And that would have been a totally boring job. <laughs> but you were out and about. I, mean, I, looked, I looked out and ended up in what they called BICS, Building Industry Consulting Service. And I was at the front desk. And it was kind of funny because I would get everything done on my front desk by noon and I'm going, okay, I need to do something. You know, I didn't have anything to do. Oh. So finally they started letting me trace uh, plats so that I could you know, that I could use them for their drawings and stuff and place their cables. And I asked the boss one day, I says, well, can I have this desk? You know, I really would like to do it. And he goes, yeah. But then it just kind of went on for a while. Nothing was said or done. And he came through from lunch one day and I says, are you going to let me have this desk? He says, you're serious, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. I love I'd the like initiative. To do this. Yeah. And so finally he, uh, put in for another person to take my place and then I moved to the back area and started doing more tracings and stuff and one of the guys took me to the field to uh, do some measuring. The guy had patience of Job <laughs> <laughs> because we had like 300 feet to measure. I measured the first 100 feet, measured the second and every time I kept dropping the first 100 feet. And I don't know why my brain just would not. Finally, about the fifth or sixth time, it dawned on me what I was doing. Oh, that's 300 feet, not 200. He says, yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there was things said when I got back to the office. But anyway, the guys were really great about me tracing things and, and learning. And then I wanted to become, you know, we had time and location that we had to spend on each job title. Well, the next job title is what we call the technical assistant. Well, we didn't have any of those in the office. So that meant I had to put in for some of the location. So I put in for the technical assistant and got one in uh, downtown Phoenix. What we called it was 16 West McDowell, which is now a bunch of apartments buildings because they flattened that. In the uh, previous office, I was at what they called Bell Plaza, which was a really nice, I was on the ninth floor and we had a beautiful view and everything. Oh. That's been flattened too. Like they've done that to pretty much everything in the US with Quest Ad. And then uh, I got my technical assistant and started, I was working in uh, Northwest Phoenix at that time. I did Sunny Slope and all of those. And it used to, you know, I would go to the Sunny Slope and do something and it's like, okay, so we've got this beautiful area right here and right here next door is just these shabby little places it was really a difference in the, between the two it was just unreal but I, I worked 
Sunny Slope for quite a while. And then I got in, after I had my six months in, I put in for what we call an engineering records, no, engineering assistant. And um, then I got upgraded to that. And then they moved me to Mesa, where I was working on a 460 North Mesa Drive. And I worked in that for a while. And then um, he said they had created a couple of uh, engineering assistants positions in the Tempe area. Okay, fine, I'm ready. So, in fact, I sat at a table like this because I didn't even have enough desks. <laughs> but I was still getting my training through different people. And I had one engineer that I followed around probably for a full year. And then one of the other engineers, he was one of the uh, upper levels, said, well, now he says you've had a good year of training and a good year of following. Now it's up to you to decide what to keep and what to throw away because you got the makings of a good engineer. Wow, And great. this guy never gave compliments, so I was really stoked about that. But then, I, like I said, I had... Uh, they kept us at 460 for a while, and then they decided the Tempe group needed to go back downtown to Phoenix. I don't know why, but they just decided that. So we ended up back in Phoenix. But then in, in the meantime, they decided to, to build 6350 South Maple in Tempe and the uh, 135 uh, Ryan building next door. So the engineers were in the Ryan building, and then another group was in the, uh, uh, excuse me, I said that wrong. The majority of the people were in Orion or uh, Maple, and the rest of us them were then in the Orion building, which was a head end uh, for uh, satellite. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm not sure what group was in there, but um, I was on the committee that kind of set things up for the for our buildings. So that, and the one thing I couldn't convince them to do is put a shower in our building. If we're out in the field and come back in, it'd be nice to take a shower, and mm -hmm. we feel a whole lot better. But they put one in the other building, and those guys never went outside. <laughs> you know, that's how, how they spent their money. And then, like I said, I handled uh, basically Tempe from Mill Avenue east to the boundary line, which would have been a little overpriced road. And uh, I know one year I argued with the boss. Excuse me. It's okay. because we had a garage on Price Road and, and there was uh, some commercial and there was some residential along there. And uh, the, the plant or cables needed to be replaced. And so he wanted me to get uh, an easement so we could place a box. And I said, no, there's no sense to doing that. I said, within five years, everything along this corridor is gonna be gone. And we argued back and forth, and finally he said, oh, do what you want. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a sense that you have quite the impressive initiative, Gladdy. <laughs> well, the idea was, you know, why waste the money on this great big huge box and pay for an easement and everything else when all of this stuff I knew was going to be gone because they were planning the uh, 101 along there. And uh, so I put on what they called an aerial box, and it wasn't two years yeah, stuff's got to go. I, I think I told Daniels at that time, told you so. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that a couple of times. He'd get irritated with me, but eventually, I mean, when I had a feeling about something, I knew what I should do. Mm -hmm. And there was many times my immediate boss kept saying, well, you can't go on gut feeling. I said, no, that's the way it is. That's just what I feel about this. And... 99% of the time I was right. So, like I said, I enjoyed my time working. We had, I had what we called routes one and two of Tempe. We used to do one, two, three, and then we combined it to make it two, make it a little easier. And then somebody else had uh, two routes on the west side. And uh, I saw a lot of growth going on in Tempe, downtown Tempe, I mean, even before the uh, inverted triangle or pyramid rather was built which is where city hall is I mean, yeah. city hall it was mostly um funeral homes around there at the time oh really yeah see that and i didn't know that there was quite a few there was three or four funeral homes and there was a lot of different and then they finally bought them all out and, and built city hall and uh 
I used to be able to walk into City Hall and say, I need a permit for such and such. And I'd walk out of there with a permit. Does not happen today. Now that's quite an unusual building. Do you yes. remember what um, maybe some thoughts were in the community or even what did you think with such an interesting building? I thought they were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you probably weren't alone. <laughs> it's like, okay. But at least it stuck out. People knew, knew where they were going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't create a problem. Mm -hmm. you just had to know where you were going when you were looking for something in there. But like I said, I would walk in and I'd say, I need a permit for this and this. Okay, here you go. And like I said, they don't do that anymore because somewhere along the line after I quit working Tempe, somebody uh, upset somebody very badly. And then from that point on, it was like, you'll do this, this, and this. I don't care what you want. Now, about what year was it that you stopped working? Mm -hmm. um, Gosh. Well, in Tempe? Yeah. I have to stop to think because from Tempe, I went to the Gilbert office. Then I went to Queen Creek and I went to Higley. Let's see, I was working Gilbert in the 90s, early 90s. Okay. And so I would guess it was around the 90s. And then in 94, when they decided to re engineer us, they moved all the engineers to. Uh, Denver, because it all had to be done the same way, uh, we told them flat out, it ain't going to work, because they left a few field engineers down here to cover for, what, how, we had 20, a good 20, you know, engineers that went up there, and by that time I had moved into the planning group uh, out of uh, the field engineering, um, had a real upset about that. Told my boss I wanted to move to planning and he goes, well, you're good where you're at. And I said, yeah, but I want, I want to do planning. I said, I think I should have had that position before so-and-so got it. Uh, well, so-and-so couldn't do that job as well as you can. I don't care. She could learn. And she was a darn smart cookie. She would have <laughs> learned if they would have done that to her. But, but the next, next uh, opening that came up for planning, I'd been in to talk to the second level about something to get him to sign something. And I says, oh, by the way, the next planning job that comes up, I want. I got it. Now, yeah. you referenced uh, the 90s a little bit. And am I correct that somewhere in the early 90s, 92, 93, did you graduate from Chandler Gilbert Community College? I graduated in 92. And that was, that was the first class mm -hmm. of Chandler Gilbert Community College? Yep. So that not only was... I'm putting air quotes for those that can't see me, quite a ways out, you know, right. at that time. Um, what was it like going to Chandler Gilbert uh, Community College when it was so new and then being the first class? Um, well, I was always taking classes of one kind or another. In fact, my husband made, when, it, when he was had been working in California, and then he was home and I was ready to head it out to class, and he goes, you're always going to class. <laughs> I said, well, I'll be glad it's class and not other men. <laughs> <laughs> He looked at me and never said another word. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite interesting going there. Um, I graduated with honors, although nobody knew it because uh, the person in charge of when I had gone, I wasn't even going to walk. And somebody else says, well, you need to walk after all you've done. It was interesting. I went, took some classes with my daughter. Oh. Not this yes. one, the other one. Um, and... Uh, one of the things that was great about the whole thing is that at that time, the company paid for all of my schooling. Regardless of what I took, they were still paying for it. Wow. We had, it was called Pathways, mm -hmm. and now they don't pay that at all. Um, or if they do, I'm not aware of it. But um, yeah, they paid for, in fact, I, if I would have had my focus together, I would have had a bachelor's degree by now. I'm like two credits away, but I was just all over the board. And finally got it together to at least get the two-year degree and then transferred my credits. And they said, well, you've got enough credits to have your bachelor's, but they weren't focused. Yeah. So I've just, all kinds of things interest me. So mm -hmm. I took those. But uh, yeah, it was 92 that I did graduate from uh, um, 
Chandler Gilbert. Now, um, let's back up just a little bit to what brought you to Tempe? Was it, uh, well, you tell me, what, what brought you to, to okay. Tempe or Arizona? We were in Illinois at the mm -hmm. time. Um, when I left Spokane, I went to Sioux Falls, South Dakota to nurses training. Well, in nurses training, I met my husband. And then tell us his name. Al Albert. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, I took a leave of absence from nurses training and I was just working at the hospital. And then he went to Illinois with his um, soon to be brother-in-law and they went to work for Chrysler Corporation. Well, I thought if you're going to Illinois, I'm not staying here. So when he came back, I told him I'm going to Illinois with you. So, you know. <laughs> you are really cute. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's, um, let's see, when did we move to Illinois? We were there in Illinois in a couple, for a couple of months, and then we got married mm -hmm. in the church, um, Evans United Methodist Church, which at that time was called Rockford, Illinois, but is now Loves Park, Illinois. They're changing names all over that place. <laughs> and we spent 10 years in Illinois, and I kept saying, we're leaving this place. This is temporary. I'm not staying here. And um, so I put in a transfer. It was all still under AT&T at the time. And I put in a transfer for Arizona, and in, there was some doctor down here that um, was holding everything up. My uh, request sat on his desk for six months or so. I don't know what his problem was, but it, anyway, finally my boss called and said, what's going on? Finally, he decided, okay, you can do that. And that's when I transferred in uh, November of 76 to um, Arizona, and I came to Tempe because Al's brother and his wife and her parents lived in Tempe. They had moved here like in 74. Okay. And her, their young, oldest son had, uh, the parents' oldest son had gone to ASU, and that's how they ended up moving here, and then uh, her sister had moved here, and then uh, they moved here. And I had wanted to go back to Washington, but Al said, I don't want to live in the desert. <laughs> Where's the, you know, you're in a bigger desert here, but, you know, in central Washington, it is high desert. Mm -hmm. And he had seen that, and he didn't want to live there. Okay, fine. So we ended up coming out here. Uh, Amy was five, and you were seven at the time. Yeah, I was in second grade. So they, uh, and did you live in Tempe or Mesa? No. Uh, actually, we moved to Chandler. Okay. And the whole time that we lived in the area, we lived in Chandler until uh, in 88. They were The street we were on, Germain, was going to be turned into a six-lane road. And I said, I don't want to be on six lanes. We had two acres, two and a half acres, and we had horses. And uh, the kids liked to, to ride the horses. And, uh, but we ended up moving to Gilbert at that time. And then in 94 is when the company decided to re-engineer and move all the engineers. And uh, so we ended up going to uh, Colorado. And I told them, we all told them, it ain't gonna work. And that was May 15th of 94. I was up there on my way up. And on May 15th of 1999, I was on my way back. You know, this is just my commentary, but you would have think you would think that they would have learned to listen to you by then. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was... So then you're back from Colorado, and your kids are growing up, and um, and you're still uh, here working, whether it's Tempe or Phoenix. See, or... When I came back, I was uh, working Higley and Queen Creek as a plant. Well, I did field engineering then because I was back out. Queen Creek was uh, 144 square miles for that central office, and it was like nothing but farmland. And one of the things that kind of chuckled me is when I came back, all the other engineers had vehicles, but I didn't have one. So one day the boss told me to go down and pick up my vehicle. I had a brand new truck. Wow. And everybody said they did their best to 
convinced me that I didn't need a truck. I should have a car. I was perfectly happy with that truck, believe me. And I put a lot of miles on it. Now, you have probably seen a lot of changes uh, in Tempe or even around oh, yeah. ASU. Are there mm -hmm. some places that you either love to go to lunch or shop or visit or, or see that are either gone now or maybe they're still there or just that you remember enjoying? Um, there was a lot of things about Tempe that I liked and I had even thought, you know, if I ever, ever had to make a choice that I would like to live in Tempe. And uh, there were some townhouses on, I think, on Broadway that I liked the look of. But, you know, it was never brought up and we always managed to live on acreage when we were, the kids were growing up. So until we moved back from uh, Colorado, in the last place we had was an acre and a quarter and we didn't have any horses or anything at that time. I didn't need any more of those. <laughs> now, was your interest in horses um, from your childhood or just something you thought, hey, this will be... I don't know how we, we have land. And this <laughs> is something you can't take this... You can, what is the old adage? You can't take the country boy and put him in the city kind of thing. My dad had to have, have something, which is why we <laughs> yeah. ended up being in, well, in that. I, but well, Monty's is where we used to do our birthday. That was traditional to go to Monty's for our birthday dinners. Yeah. That was one of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. But there was one thing, when <clears throat> it's on Baseline, where the old stockyards used to be. There's a the stock the hotel there, there, I think, now, and a McDonald's and stuff in that area. Used to be stockyards. And I dropped my husband off there one day, because he wanted to go to the sale. <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> when I came back to pick him up, he had bought nine calves. Okay. I guess I better go home and get the trailer. <laughs> so I went home, got the trailer, came back, and we loaded 10 calves mm -hmm. and raised most of those calves. Uh, some didn't make it, and I think we had two or three that were raised up. But both the girls were in 4-H mm -hmm. and FHA. F F F well, I was in FHA. Yeah, FFA, she was in we FFA. Were all... <laughs> F F A. Farmer, future farmers, and uh, Amy raised uh, cattle, and she had this one, and I did not know at the time that when she played with him, she used to rub his forehead. Well, I was out in the yard one day, and he was out in the yard, and he came up, and I went like this, and then he started butting me. Well, when you've got a 2,000-pound animal butting you, you think, mm, not a good idea. I went in the house, <laughs> and I found out later that that's how she played with him. I mean, yeah, they they both enjoyed doing that, and she raised. He was a champion beef, but there's so much politics in uh, that; it's just unbelievable. You would see some of the kids getting these astronomical bids on their animal that wasn't worth much, but their name was what was carrying it. Mm. And Amy was new to it, so she didn't really get into it that much. And so Amy was your first daughter, and then... No, she's my oh, I'm the I'm the oldest. Margie, yeah. okay. Yeah. And so tell us about your daughters. We've, we've referenced a little bit to um, okay. Margie, but... Both Margie and Amy attended you know, uh, school in Chandler. They went to Knox Elementary, and then Willis Junior High, and then graduated Chandler High. You graduated in 1989? No. <laughs> you got that around. 1987. Amy's 1989. <laughs> you know. You were very close. I'm not sure my mom would know. <laughs> at, at my age, I've forgotten a lot. But uh, when we first moved here, Al worked for uh, Fuller Elementary School for a couple of years before he went into the uh, sprinkler fitter trade. And they were kind of sorry to see him go. So if you ever had a chance to talk to, shoot, what was his buddy's name? Oh, Andy. Yeah, Andy. At, I but you, they were in the custodians at... Um, they were both custodians at the school. Oh, nice. And Andy lives in Guadalupe, and I'm trying to think of his last name. But he was Indian. Very nice guy. In fact, we were over there one day, and... Uh, we were we were visiting him and his wife 
and Al and Amy were with me, and she was home alone. And I told Amy, I said, go on in and uh, call Margie and tell her we're on our way home. She walks out, she goes back in. I don't know how to use that phone. <laughs> it was a, a wall phone with a dial. She had no clue. You know, she knew how to use the, the touchstone and stuff, but it was kind of funny because... It was an old rotary. <laughs> yeah. She had no idea, so I showed her how to use the phone. But, oh, that's funny. Yeah, there was, you know, a lot of things that I just take for granted. Like, you know, I, I could cable something from the central office out to wherever and never think twice about it. And then everything started moving to fiber, and I'm not so much on fiber. And when... They would sit me down when we first started using computers. I would sit down at the computer, touch it, and it would just zap. They could not, I could not handle a computer until they got a special pad to put under the keyboard so that I didn't magnetize it. But now that's all built in. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like, zap. I said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Some kind of superpower. Well, like some people can't wear watches because of that kind of thing. The yeah. watches don't work. It's yeah. your system. I can't wear a watch. Hmm. Um, so you're, uh, you have Margie and Amy. Do they have children? Yeah. Um, yeah, I have one. She's got one. I. Ricky is 22. Mm -hmm. Just got married last March. Oh wow. And Amy's two children are. 31 and 27. Yeah, um, they just had birthdays. So that's what? They just so had they birthdays. just had birthdays in in um, August. In so August, that's why yeah. it's easy to remember. With the seven year old granddaughter, she just turned her seven. Oh. Her granddaughter. So now, do your grandchildren live in Tempe or in Arizona? Um, Albert lives in uh, Colorado. He lives in Fort Collins, and uh, brain fart. What's his name? <laughs> well, Colton. We've, we've been having trouble issues over that way, but. Uh, he's Colton. out in Santan Valley, Queen Creek. It's slash. It's, yeah, they keep I think he's actually towns. Queen Creek address. But he was born in Hawaii when Amy was in the uh, Navy. Oh, okay. And his name is K O L T E N, which is a derivative, a Hawaiian derivative. She did not know it was Hawaiian at the time that she gave it to him. So it was kind of funny that she chose that. Yeah. And he chose it because most people do the C O L T O N and Correct. didn't want him known as a colt. He's not a horse. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So she named him Colton. And then, like I said, Albert, Albert was down here for a while living, but he decided that it was more beneficial to him to work in Colorado because he can make double the money up there than what he does here. He would he uh, does uh, draw. Garage doors. Garage doors. Oh, okay. And he would give them a price down here, and they would argue with him, Ooh. not stopping to think the heat and stuff that they go through to go in there. And so finally he decided, no, he's going back to Colorado. So he's been back there for six months or more? Yeah, at a least. over six months, yeah. And is, is he the one that has the... No, Colton is. Oh. A seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Emma just turned seven this month, so... Yeah, wow. Well. Now I'm trying to think of there's more things that I can tell you about Tempe. I mean, the downtown area changed so much. And we, you know, of course I was right in the middle of all of that. Yeah. From all these farm fields and, and uh, everything, because the distance that it would go when you drive from Chandler to Tempe, because my aunt and uncle lived on Yale yeah. in that area. I mean, just the farm fields, and it seemed like it took forever to get there. And that, but at one point they were living down off of Mesa, um, in Mesa, off a of country club, and, and they're right off of Robeson. And the house they were in when the Salt River flooded, it, at one point it, they weren't there at that house anymore. But at one point the river had gotten that high. Yeah. When the river would flood in those areas, but yeah, that's why most of our Tempe growing up initially was in the stomping grounds of Tempe because of her job and just family living there. And it's very interesting that you are one of the people that was instrumental in the infrastructure. You know, we most of us go around our daily lives and don't think about the people that are responsible for the telephone lines or the cables. Um, and so people that are planning that and mapping that out and going underground and 
and figuring out where mm -hmm. things should be is not well, something we always think about. because of that infrastructure factor in every little town I drive in, she said, where are you going? I know the back roads. I'm taking the <laughs> shortcuts to get off the main drags when there's the stoplights and stuff. So just, well, I know the, I don't you know the developer was, but at one time when they were working downtown Tempe, they decided that they wanted the central office moved. Sure you do. After we told them how many millions of dollars it would cost them to do it, mm, I think we'll rethink that one. <laughs> they have, you know, because I mean, there's a lot of cabling that goes in there, and people don't realize because well, they don't they see a building that's all they see. That's they right. Don't see anything that comes in underground or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's. I don't even think a lot of people would realize that there are, you know, tunnels under ASU. Well, you might do it, but <laughs> a lot of people may not know that. No, um, just about every city has them. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Part of it's prohibition, but part of it is the infrastructure, like City of Mesa. The light rail um, cable lines all run right in their tunnels now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, they said there's a lot of tunnels on ASU. What year did you retire? Well, I officially retired the first time from uh, 2000, 2000 or 2001? Mm, after 2001, when you pretty much wanted to tell your boss off because of my son and medical stuff. Okay, um, uh, I guess it was 2000. No, 2000 I retired, and then her son was born in 2001. Um, and then I went back. They kept calling me back to uh, do this or do that, so I contracted back for... Uh, well, until 2021, actually. I oh, finally okay. said, okay, I've had enough. It was the 19th of August of 2021, and I had 52 years service with telecommunications. So I said, wow, I've done enough. Yeah, well, that's very impressive. I, wow. you know, I hung it up that day. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was, I've had a lot of different interesting things that, you know, happened. I mean, I was out in the field one day, and I was looking at cable on, uh, what is now Rio Salado. Mm -hmm. It was called First Street at the time, but I was east of like around Smith and that area. And I'm walking around and I'm going, I really should check out that cable, but something doesn't feel right. So I'm not going, but I'm not going to do it. I'll do it another day. The next day in the paper, I read that they found a body that day. And it was like, I'm sure glad I didn't go out there because, you know, I, one of two things. I would have either found the body or found the person, on, you know, that was doing it. So mm -hmm. I was glad I hadn't done that. And it's just little things like that. I've always had this instinct about certain things that I have to watch what I'm doing, mm -hmm. or I will make a comment that someplace along the line is going to come back to haunt me. Um, just like when Amy was growing up, she was a difficult child, and I used to tell her, if you don't straighten your butt out, I'm going to send you back where you came from. Uh, I guess I did that. Well, there's a lot of parents that have probably said that to their kids. <laughs> I, mentioned that, I mentioned that to somebody else. She goes, yep, my mom always used to tell me that too. Just going around <laughs> that way we did. Yeah. Um, what, uh, uh, are there any other uh, stories or memories about Tempe or your work in Tempe that you haven't had a chance to share that you would like to, to tell us about or um, I don't think, did you bring photographs or? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure we don't I wouldn't have the clue as to where they are, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, still, we barely struck on the stuff we needed for <laughs> this month. <laughs> but is, is there anything that uh, you want to share that, uh, about your um, life working in Tempe or um, raising your family that I didn't ask you about or that you haven't had a chance to share? No, I enjoyed Tempe. Uh, like I said, it was a, there was a lot of different things that I did. One of my favorite things to place was what we call a controlled environment vault, which a CEB. It's like the small size is like 12 foot wide and 16 foot long, and it's all underground except for a, a thing on top that indicates where it's at. And uh, it's like a mini, mini CO. So you could cable to it and then you could fill, feed out a lot of different things in the area mm -hmm. and uh, I remember one one of the 
the new engineers came in and I sent him out to do something. He comes back in, he says, there's a funny thing out there, I don't know what it is. I says, oh, you mean the CEV? He says, CEV? I said, yeah, it's a controlled environment vault. He had been working the field, but he had no idea what it was. And it was just kind of funny that, you know, I could tell them these things and go, okay, you guys, you don't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can definitely tell that not only you have good instincts, but uh, are very observant and paying attention to what's going on around you. That's probably part of what, uh, you know, was, was part of your work um, yeah. habits, you know. Well, I don't know that I'm so observant anymore. It's like... Just leave me alone, give me my iPad, and I can read. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one of the things I wanted to ask, is what is keeping you um, interested or busy? What are, what have you done since retiring? A whole lot of nothing. <laughs> Sometimes that's nice, right? Yeah, uh, like I said, give me my iPad. I, I can't see to read a regular page because of my eyes right now, uh, but I can read on my iPad, and I do quite a bit of reading there and playing games. And trying to convince her that we've got to do something with that house. <laughs> it's slow going. She had to be ready. There was a lot yeah. of there was a lot of factors in it. Yeah, we're slowly doing it. We're still going through a lot of my daughter's estates. But with her medical too, it's been a little bit you know rocky since twenty twenty. Things were okay for a while. Yeah, I was doing and fine, then and then hit. all of a sudden, boom! I got hit with a E. coli infection, and that stuff can kill you because yeah. it did. Wow. They brought me back, and she didn't know about the uh, no, non-resuscitate in my living will, so she didn't tell them, <laughs> so I'm here. Um, I don't, what I don't know, they didn't ask questions. <laughs> um, like I said, uh, it was the E. coli infection and a kidney stone that got me, and I have been slowly coming back from that. And of course, in May of this year, I've had... Two, two kidney stones in the right, and I've got one in the left, and it's like, I don't know why I keep growing these stuff things. Hmm? I said, then all this other stuff hit, so we're just an emotional, so that's why, thank goodness this was pushed out as far as it was, because at the time, I think we were supposed to do it a couple months back, everything just hit the fan and tanked. Yeah, yeah. Right. The, the last question I want to ask, and then we open it up if, if anybody else wants to ask some questions too, is does faith or spirituality play a role in your life or anything you want to share about that? Um, yeah, I, uh, I've done a lot of studying on spirituality and I have my beliefs. And nobody can tell me that there is not another side because I've been there. And I'm still pissed at my brother. <laughs> he met me when I came over there, and he said, you can't stay. I said, excuse me, but I want to. I'm done. He said, no, you're not. You get back there. And I had to come back. And I'm still like, why? So I guess there's something for me to do, and I'm not sure what. And... Well, we are very thankful that you're here to share your story and uh, some... Uh, stories about your family and your work in Tempe. It's very interesting, especially, like I said, when uh, we don't always meet the people that uh, do the work that we, you know, don't don't see right in front of us. So. I don't feel like I, you know, contributed anything that would help. Um, I mean, I can, I have my memories of what the places were like. I can remember going out on Dobson Road when it was two-lane uh, concrete, and at the con uh, Dobson Road and Elliot, they decided that they were going to do something with the um, uh, irrigation. Mm -hmm. And so that whole center section was nothing but mud. Okay, I am in a four-wheel drive truck, but it's an older one where you have to get out and lock the hubs. And I'm in heels and nylons. And I'm going, I'm stuck. And he's Construction workers were watching me. Finally, one comes up and he says, well, you know you can lock, uh, you've got four-wheel drive. I said, yeah. Would you mind locking it in, please? 
he locked the hubs in and I pulled out and you know then when I got onto some co concrete I got out and unlocked them and took off but it was like no way am I getting out in this mud you guys could watch me all day but it's not <laughs> happening but you know those were the types of construction that was going on and I would end up getting in the middle of it I had this nose that okay this road's clear this one's not take this one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I end up in the middle of construction that's like I don't want to end up in the middle of construction but I'm there what is that saying the road you're on you're always under construction or is there some kind of saying like that yeah it definitely is <laughs> um does anyone else have any questions uh, you meant, this is Dwayne Rohn asking this question. You talked about some places uh, that used to be farmland mm -hmm. in areas of Tempe, and I think some people would love to hear a little more about some of those locations and and what's there now, uh, or, yeah, or or you don't have to remember what's there now, but a place that's not farmland anymore. That well, There's a whole lot of subdivisions around here that are used to be farmland. Yeah, that and a lot of the areas around Montes La Casa Vieja, the Hayden's Mill, all of that. Yeah. None of those buildings were down there on the riverfront. Any of that, that river wasn't even dammed up then to create the lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, none of that existed back in the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. they talked about that for years about you know the lake they were going to make, and we go, yeah, we'll see if that ever happens. Well, finally it did. In fact, there was a. Uh, horse place across the, the river that uh, ended up having to move because they got flooded out. Was that Tempe Stables? Was it? Was uh, that, it? that could have been. Yeah, I think it could have been Tempe Stables. Yeah, that was the first place I went horseback riding yeah. when I was in high school. Because at one point that one, which it doesn't anymore, the road used to go into the riverbed and they finally said when it kept flooding and having the one way, I think that's when they created the bridge so it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Because it was where the railroad tracks are and that you were between the bridge and the railroad tracks, but it was one way there and one way is enough is enough. Yeah, I know one night I was coming home. We'd had a party for somebody that was leaving our office and the party was in downtown uh, Phoenix. So I headed for, let's see, which direction did I go? I headed for Central and the freeway. Well, on the way, we get the fact that the bridge has been closed. Okay, well, we can't go that way. What was the third way? Because the third, my third alternative was I headed for Tempe Bridge. I said, we're going to try that and see if we get across. It probably took us over an hour to get across the bridge, but we did manage to get across. I think before they closed it. Before they closed it. And this was... Obviously, before you could look on your cell phone for alternate oh, routes. Yeah, <laughs> I think this was about 1978 when they had the 100-year flood. And then a couple of years later, we had another one. What do you mean, 100 years? I'm not 100 years. You know, but yeah, they uh, got caught in that more than once. So, and it, uh, like I said, there's a whole lot of subdivisions around that used to be farmland. And, you know, I... Uh, uh, I had one place that I was going to meet them. They needed some some phone service, and I drove out there. He says, uh, "Once you pass this road, look for the tree on the right or on the left, <laughs> and you turn left at the tree." Okay, and I drove right out there, and there was that big tree. <laughs> That's their that used to be the old farmers' landmarks. Where, where was so that they started located? cutting things down? Yeah, pardon. Where was that located? Um, Thinking that's about Gilbert and Hunt Highway. Okay. So we were out of Tempe at that time, but um, I'm just the directions. I can think of you know a lot of things in in Tempe that are just like that whole area along Rio Salado from the freeway west, and you know you've got the um, Cub is it Cubs Stadium now. What is it called? I'm not even sure. The, 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 the Cubs complex is yeah, the other, complex. other side. It all used to be, you yeah. know, small businesses and stuff, and they bought them all out, and now they've got malls there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Dobson and, and Rio Salado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to work on that mall, which I was glad. Well, I know another <laughs> area that had changed that was just. 
Is it off of Mill Avenue? It was just um, north there. If it wasn't Mill Avenue, it was one of the other streets, but it was the area that um, every all the people used to go down and party. It kept changing names. I don't think that's there anymore because just too much trouble was happening mm -hmm. after it was, it used yep. to be Club Rio and it's a couple other things, but that's one area I know that has changed because of whatever's going on with ASU yeah. and all that development mm -hmm. on Down. by the light rail, all those townhome condos with businesses below. That's happening up in Mesa now too. They're doing the in same downtown, concept. Um, Tempe just to the west of Mill Avenue. There used to be a uh, a store uh, like a, uh, fruits and all that. Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Gentle Strength Co-op. Co-op. That's mm -hmm. what it was. That's the word I was trying to think of. Mm -hmm. Like my my brain is going like. <laughs> Yeah, you're sleeping now. <laughs> um, yeah, General Strength Co-op. Yeah. Used to like to go down there. Was, I could always find interesting stuff. But um, I don't even know if that's there now or not. I honestly don't know either. I don't think so, but I'm not positive. No. Yeah. Yeah, I used to frequent some of those places just to see what. And the other place that I liked is uh, Changing Hand Bookstores. Oh, right, right down on Mill Avenue, and, and that's then, still there. Yeah, no, it's not on Mill Avenue. It's at yeah. McClintock. Oh, they, they, McClintock. Well, they moved it over to the, by the um, by Guadalupe. Yeah, over by Trader Joe's now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there's also a, a, a changing hands in, in Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I used. To, I bought a lot of books there. In fact, I still have <laughs> a lot of those books, <laughs> and a lot of them were on spirituality and mm -hmm. and. Uh, learning about you know the other side i know i have one book in my collection i've yet to read because for some reason when i started reading it it just bothered me and i've still got it and the author is dead been dead a long time ruth montgomery but i gotta go ahead and read it because you know she talks about walk-ins and things like that and uh I find that fascinating because there are times when I think about the things that I have done with the engineering and the people that I've met, and yet I will go out there and meet somebody and I wait until they say something to me before I know for sure that I've met them before because I don't recognize them. Hmm. And I've had this um, blind spot on people for a long time. I mean, I, and I, lot of, I met a lot of, you know, construction people. Sure. I had one, I walked, in fact, I was riding with a installer one day, and he had a job on one of the, and this was in Tempe, but I couldn't tell you exactly where. Um, but it was a new complex, and he had an um, order to put in new phone service. And he gave me the address, and I said, there's nothing there. There is no phone service there. Well, we go out there and meet the guy, and he says, you know, I said, you're not hooked up to anything. He says, well, there's a cable right there, and you can come from there to there. I said, no, we can't. I said, that cable belongs to SRP. I can't touch it. I said, you need to do this. And I proceeded to tell him everything he had to do. And he looked at me like, how do you know? I said, I'm the engineer for the area. You don't have service. He got he did what he was supposed to do and they got him service. But it was like you guys can't just decide that we're gonna do something because you want it done. You have to contact us. And I think sometimes because I was a woman, they figured, oh she don't know what she's talking about. They found out soon enough that yeah, I did know what I was talking about. And then they would comply and do what they had to. Yeah, I don't think it would be too long before they would find out yeah. Letty. Which I, I do want to ask, and then if anybody else has a question, I can't help but wonder, um, how did you get your name? Because I, I don't know, is that a common name when... Gladdy? Yeah, Gladdy. I mean, I haven't heard it before. Gladys, I've heard, but um, Gladdy... That's my legal name is Gladys. Oh, okay. But I dropped the S. I was named after a family friend, and her name was Gladys Marincheck. And uh, when I met her years later... She looked at me, she says, hi, don't you hate your name? 
She went by Gladdy also. She, oh, fun. She hated the Gladys too. Mm -hmm. and I, why they decided to name me that, I don't know, because originally it was supposed to be named after my mother, and they changed their mind. It's a, it's, a, you know, I, I think Gladdy is a very fun, upbeat, positive name, and it's fun that you, that she changed it, and you did too. Yeah. And to me, Gladys makes me feel like an old lady. <laughs> I mean, I realize I've reached the senior level, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how but that happened. An, there was another connotation behind it why she dropped it too because of well, it. Well, get people get. I used to get teased about my name because of the TV show Gladys Kravitz. No, no. Oh, they call me Gladass. Oh. <laughs> In fact, my husband finally brought bought me a uh, belt that he had happy in uh, engraved on the back of it. I wonder if I still got that. Yeah, it's hanging in the closet. <laughs> anyway, she says happy bottom. I, think, I know. In reference to that. Yes, thank yeah. you yeah. very much. And uh, <laughs> we look forward to sharing your, your stories on our YouTube channel. Like I said, I don't video very well. <laughs> so I, <have> <laughs> I know. You're adorable. Thank, thank you, Gladdy. Yeah.